Not long ago, the solar system seemed complete, and the planets we knew were the ones we could see. However, one planet remained hidden from view, Neptune. Its existence was famously predicted through mathematics long before it was observed. By the early 19th century, astronomers noticed that Uranus did not move exactly as expected, according to Newton's laws, and showed small but persistent discrepancies. Suspecting that an unknown body's gravitational pull could account for these anomalies, Urbain Le Verrier calculated approximate positions for this unseen planet, predicting that it should exist beyond Uranus. And on the night of September 23, 1846, Johann Galle found the new planet almost exactly where Le Verrier had predicted. The fact that both the existence and location of Neptune had to be predicted before we could even see it shows just how elusive this planet is. Although Neptune, with a diameter of 49,000 kilometers, is the fourth largest planet in our solar system, it is the eighth and farthest planet from the Sun, with an average distance of about 4.5 billion kilometers, which is 30 times farther than Earth. In addition to that, Neptune takes about 165 Earth years to complete one full orbit around the Sun. This means that since its discovery, it has only completed one full orbit by 2011. Although Neptune is four times larger than Earth, its immense distance and exceptionally long orbital period make it look like a faint, slow-moving star when viewed through a telescope. As you would imagine, Neptune receives only a fraction of the sunlight that reaches Earth, approximately 1 900th. As a result, temperatures in its upper atmosphere can drop as low as minus 214 degrees Celsius. Yet, despite receiving the least sunlight of any planet in the solar system, Neptune is not the coldest. That distinction belongs to Uranus, where temperatures can fall to minus 224 degrees Celsius. This seeming contradiction is due to Neptune's internal heat, which causes the planet to emit more than twice the energy it receives from the Sun. Scientists believe this excess heat originates from an internal energy source, possibly the gradual contraction of the planet's interior over time, a process known as Kelvin-Helmholtz contraction, or residual heat from its formation. This internal energy plays a crucial role in driving Neptune's turbulent atmosphere. Additionally, Neptune's rapid rotation, completing a full day in just 16 hours, enhances the Coriolis effect, causing its winds and storms to spin more violently. So, although you would expect such a distant planet to be calm and inert, Neptune is surprisingly active. Wind speeds on the planet have been measured at over 2,000 kilometers per hour, far exceeding even the most powerful hurricanes on Earth and surpassing the wind speeds recorded on Jupiter and Saturn. These winds are organized into a series of latitudinal bands, regions that alternate between eastward and westward flow, much like the jet streams on Earth, but on a much larger scale. Because Neptune's rotation rate and internal heating vary by latitude, the atmosphere exhibits differential rotation. The equatorial regions and polar regions rotate at slightly different speeds. The intense winds also give rise to enormous rotating high-pressure systems, known as dark spots. The most famous of Neptune's storms is the Great Dark Spot, first observed by the Voyager 2 spacecraft in 1989. This storm, comparable in size to Earth, was an anticyclonic system with extremely high wind speeds. But unlike Jupiter's Great Red Spot, which has persisted for centuries, the Great Dark Spot vanished by the time the Hubble Space Telescope observed Neptune in 1994, showing that these storm systems typically last on the order of months or a few years. Over the years, Hubble has detected several other dark spots, including a new great dark spot in the planet's northern hemisphere in 2018. These dark storms form at mid-latitudes and slowly drift toward the equator, where they eventually dissipate. Often, bright white or light blue companion clouds appear next to dark spots formed by upwelling gases, like methane, freezing into hazy clouds at high altitudes. In addition to large dark spots, smaller storms and bright cloud outbursts come and go. Neptune's weather is also powered by its axial tilt of about 28.3 degrees, similar to Earth's and Mars's. This tilt means that Neptune does experience seasons. However, they change very slowly because of Neptune's long year, with each season lasting roughly 40 Earth years. 
Some observations suggest subtle global brightening or dimming as different hemispheres tilt toward the sun over decades-long intervals. Neptune's signature deep blue color comes primarily from methane in its atmosphere, which absorbs red light and reflects blue wavelengths back into space. However, the intensity of Neptune's blue hue, more vivid than that of Uranus, suggests the presence of an unknown atmospheric component enhancing the color. Neptune's atmosphere is composed mainly of hydrogen at about 80%, helium at around 19%, with methane making up about 1.5%, along with trace amounts of ammonia, water vapor, ethane, and other hydrocarbons. Although Neptune is often described as a gas giant, it is more accurately categorized, along with Uranus, as an ice giant. Its internal structure is thought to have several distinct layers. Neptune is thought to have a small, dense core composed of heavier elements, rock and metals. Estimated at around 1.2 Earth masses, this core is both very hot, about 5,000 Kelvin, and under immense pressure. Above the core lies a massive mantle, or ice layer of water, ammonia, and methane ices. Despite the term ice, these materials are at extremely high temperatures and pressures, so the icy description refers more to composition than literal ice in the everyday sense. The temperature here ranges from 2,000 to 5,000 Kelvin. The atmosphere transitions from the upper mantle region into layers dominated by hydrogen and helium, with methane mixed in. This region is incredibly deep, gradually shifting from supercritical fluids near the mantle to the gaseous outer layers. Under the immense pressures and temperatures deep below the cloud tops, methane can decompose. Then the freed carbon atoms may reorganize into crystals of diamond. These diamonds would then rain, or sink deeper into the planet, because diamond is denser than the surrounding fluid. This precipitation could continue until the diamonds either melt deeper in the planet's interior, or collect in a carbon-rich layer above the planet's rocky core. Scientists have long speculated that diamond rain might form deep within the icy giants of our solar system. Although no direct probe has confirmed this phenomenon, laboratory experiments on Earth and our knowledge of the planet's interiors provide evidence that it is possible. Diamonds form at very high pressures and moderate to high temperatures. On Earth, natural diamonds form at pressures of 45 to 60 kilobars, roughly 45,000 to 60,000 times Earth's surface pressure, at depths of 140 to 190 kilometers below continents. In Neptune's deep interior, the pressure is far greater, hundreds of gigapascals, or millions of times Earth's atmospheric pressure. A discussion of Neptune's structure would be incomplete without mentioning its ring system. Astronomers first suspected their existence in the 1980s, when subtle winks in starlight during occultation events suggested ring-like material around the planet. Then, in 1989, Voyager 2 spacecraft confirmed that Neptune indeed possesses a complex set of faint, dusty rings. These rings are named after astronomers who contributed to the study of the planet. Gala, Le Verrier, Lasselle, Arago, and Adams. Each ring is quite narrow and faint compared to Saturn's system. The rings are made predominantly of dust grains and small rocky fragments coated with dark, reddish material possibly organic compounds or radiation-processed ice. As a result, they reflect very little sunlight, which makes them challenging to detect with Earth-based telescopes. The presence of both dust and larger pebbles or small boulders creates rings that are neither purely gaseous nor dominated by large chunks of ice. Instead, they sit somewhere in between, with a size distribution that is still an active research topic. A widely supported idea is that the rings formed from the breakup of one or more small moons or the gradual accumulation of debris from comets captured by Neptune's gravity. Over long periods, repeated impacts pulverize these objects into smaller and smaller particles, which spread out along circular orbits to form ring-like structures. The most distinctive feature of Neptune's rings is found in the outermost Adam's ring, where several dense segments, often referred to as arcs, stand out. Known by names such as Liberty, Equality, Fraternity, and Courage, 
These arcs represent regions where particles cluster more tightly, rather than dispersing evenly. The prevailing theory for their persistence involves gravitational interactions with a small moon called Galatea, which orbits just inside the atom's ring. By exerting a shepherding influence, Galatea helps corral the ring material and maintain these clumps, although scientists still debate how stable they are and whether they shift or change over longer periods. Besides the ring system, Neptune has a collection of 16 known moons, each bearing a name tied to sea nymphs or related mythological figures. They can be divided broadly into two categories, regular and irregular. Regular satellites typically have prograde orbits, moving in the same direction as the planet's rotation, and tend to orbit close to the planet's equatorial plane. Irregular satellites usually follow more distant, eccentric orbits, with many traveling in a retrograde direction. These irregular satellites often originate from captured objects or from collision-based processes. Neptune's moon system is dominated by the largest and most noteworthy satellite, Triton, which was discovered only 17 days after the discovery of Neptune itself. It measures about 2,700 kilometers in diameter, making it the seventh largest moon in the solar system. Unlike most large moons, Triton has a retrograde orbit, meaning it moves around Neptune in the opposite direction of the planet's rotation, which strongly suggests that it is a captured object rather than one that formed in place. Many scientists propose that Triton was originally a dwarf planet from the Kuiper Belt, whose path brought it close enough to Neptune that the gas giant's gravity locked it into orbit. This retrograde motion, coupled with its relatively high density, also helps explain the significant geological changes that may have resulted from tidal heating when Triton was first captured. Despite being over 4 billion kilometers from the Sun, Triton shows surprising signs of geological and possibly even cryovolcanic activity. Observations by Voyager 2 revealed a few dozen active geysers venting what appeared to be nitrogen gas and dark dust plumes several kilometers high. The source of the venting is likely seasonal heating of subsurface nitrogen ice that explosively converts to gas. Triton's surface itself is made primarily of frozen nitrogen and water ice, with traces of carbon dioxide and methane ices also present. These ices form a remarkably reflective crust that glistens under the dim sunlight. One of Triton's most distinctive features is its so-called cantaloupe terrain, an area of pits and ridges giving the surface a melon-like texture. Other prominent regions include smooth plains and mysterious ridges and scarps, all indicating ongoing or recent geological processes. In addition to its dynamic surface, Triton has a thin but measurable atmosphere. Primarily composed of nitrogen with trace amounts of methane, the atmosphere is denser than that of any other Neptune moon and undergoes seasonal changes as different regions of the moon warm and cool over Triton's 165-year orbit around the Sun. At the surface, temperatures are among the coldest in the solar system, hovering near minus 235 degrees Celsius. Unlike Mars, Jupiter, or Saturn, which have had multiple dedicated missions, Neptune remains largely a mystery. To date, only Voyager 2 has flown by Neptune, and as I said, that was back in 1989. No dedicated mission to the ice giant has materialized since. Simply reaching the planet can take anywhere from 10 to 15 years, but more importantly, the right timing does not come around very often. As I mentioned earlier, Neptune orbits the Sun once every 165 years, whereas Earth does so once a year. For a spacecraft leaving Earth to catch up with Neptune, the two planets must be in positions that allow a trajectory with a reasonable travel time. Moreover, many distant mission designs rely on gravity assists from Jupiter. However, Jupiter takes about 12 years to orbit the Sun, lining up Earth, Jupiter, and Neptune so that each encounter falls at the right place and the right time is a complex puzzle. If you enjoyed learning about Neptune, please like the video, subscribe to my channel, and press the notification bell for more stories about our universe. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.